Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome back to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thank you for joining us again this week. So last week, we covered part one of uh, recession proofing your company even if we're not going into a recession if you think that we're not that's great yep you still if you're recession proof no matter what you're you're teflon right yeah, you, nothing right. sticks to you and you can keep rolling so let's recession proof your company your company today mm-hmm. right part one we kind of talk through uh, uh self-assessment self-assessment mm-hmm. how to look at where what you've been doing for the last two years and what's working what's not and how do we build our product from there, knowing what our clients want and and growing that direction with the customer service. How do I keep jobs coming in if jobs start being harder to get? As things start slowing down with with Mm -hmm. homeowners and and different clients, how do I continue to roll? Uh, Today, we are talking about expanding your client base. Mm -hmm. And we really are, are a little nervous about this one because it is going in the opposite direction of some of our other podcasts, <laughs> yeah. which is staying focused with one thing. Yeah. And so we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, mm-hmm. a, mm-hmm. as this goes on. So Jared, tell, give me a little breakdown of what, what this means. So uh, expanding your customer basis is what we're, is what we're talking about in this one. And the big piece of that is what happens in our industry, in the contracting industry, um, when and if a recession happens and the shift of money that happens when, if a recession happens and uh, the, the 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 housing market tanks or inflation is super high and people can't afford things and uh, all of a sudden people, if, if I'm, a, a, all of my business is with homeowners and all of a sudden homeowners are afraid because there's a recession coming or we're in the middle of a recession and money is precious and so they're not pulling money out of their home. They don't have the savings. And all of a sudden, homeowner jobs dry up. And I'm out of business if that's where all of my eggs are. Yeah. And what typically happens in that spot is it shifts over into different industries where the money is no longer in the homeowner industry. It's in investors or some other variable of type of industry yeah. that is capitalizing on a recession uh, time. Yeah. And so diversifying our clients is figuring out what can I do to recession proof my company that if this one, the homeowner side goes down, the other industry that I'm in is going up and it kind of balances my revenue when one or the other goes up or down. Yeah, The last two years have been absolutely insane in the construction world because uh, of a a multitude of of factors. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's two ways that people pay to renovate their houses normally right? Um, outside of an inheritance or something. They, the, the two ways are you've got savings often tied up in stocks and the stock market and bonds and that, that sort of thing where you're saving up money. You've got some assets uh, that way. And then the other way is equity, uh, equity in mm-hmm. your property. I'm pulling cash out of the house. I've gotten a, you know, a HELOC or some sort of loan against the equity in my property. And there's been a lot of that recently because house house value has been shooting up. And and for a long time, the the interest rates were at 2%, right? Mm-hmm. And so you can pull money out for practically nothing yep. and and use it to renovate your home. Or you've got, you, you put some money in crypto and all of a sudden I got 150K sitting in my account and yep. so I can pull that money out. Well, over the last three, four, five, six months, all of the stock market has gone way, mm-hmm. way down. So the money that I had in there is now cut in half, and I'm not really wanting to pull that out yet until it bounces back. Yeah. Or my house. We went from a 2% interest to an 8% interest. Yeah. It's a huge difference on a $100,000 loan to renovate of what your monthly payment is going to be to pay that back. Not to mention, this hasn't really started yet, but it's coming. The value of the property dropping a little bit mm-hmm. and not having that equity that you can pull out. Well, in every every financial channel, whether you listen to the radio or the news or whatever, the big R, R word is being thrown around, recession. Yeah. And we went through, we've been through a couple of those in all of our generation, and it was rough. Yeah. And so people get afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the biggest recession we talked about last week it, it being 08, 09 that we've seen in our lifetime we grew during that because of what we're talking about today. Yep. We diversified and we grew and grew and really built our processes during that. That's right. So let's That's jump right. into that a little bit more. So 
<laughs> what we're talking about with diversifying your, your client base starts with everything we've talked about. Every other podcast of the last mm-hmm. 50 or 60, 70 podcasts we've done. What you need to do is start very focused on the current product that you have. Yep. Right. So who is your client? If you're listening to this, you probably have either a homeowner, investors, insurance, insurance work, property managers. I do multifamily. I built commercial. Whatever your client is, you have a product that you're selling to them. And for some reason, they're buying it from you. Yep. Right. And so we're looking at that first. My current client, let's say, is a homeowner. I do homeowner renovations for. We're going to start there as our example. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm looking at that client. And so first thing I'm gonna do is say, my product right now services this client. Last week we talked about figuring out how good your product is, right? right? Is it false? Did the last year and a half of just an insane amount of clients make my product better than it actually is Mm -hmm. or look better than it actually is? Mm -hmm. So once I know that my product is refined and people do like it, I now I'm gonna look at my clients and say, okay, homeowner, what does a homeowner care about and why is my product successful? What do I need to do to make it more successful? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A homeowner, for example, number one thing that a homeowner picks a contractor for is I feel comfortable and confident that this experience will be smooth and good. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get ripped off. You're not going to be some fly by night. I care more about the experience being good because you're going to be ripping apart my house as I'm living in it. And, uh, you know, my kids are here and I need to feel safe and understood and heard and taken care of. That's the number one desire of a homeowner. Yeah. Number two desire, second to that, is money. I need to make sure I can afford this and that it fits in my budget. Mm -hmm. But more important than money, that's why they pick us when we're a little more expensive than the next guy, is the client experience. Experience, that's right. right. So this product, my homeowner product, I need to make sure that my process from first contact with the client through final invoice, my project management process is servicing that client well. Mm -hmm. I need enough profit. I need to be at 33% profit Mm -hmm. plus minus from there to be able to afford to give the customer service needed, to give the attention needed here, to give that. So my product that I'm building is servicing these clients and I'm self-assessing my company right now. It it, it is what you should be doing, right? Does that make sense? So I'm looking at that. I'm singularly focused on who I'm servicing. Mm -hmm. If right now you are servicing anybody that calls, if you are not saying no to anybody and you're servicing, I did a a dentist office build out and then I did a kitchen and And then then I did a deck landscaping, flipped a apartment between tenants. And yeah, if you're doing that, you are doing it wrong and you will not grow. I promise you, you will not grow that yeah. way because you do not have a set process that is that can be duplicated to service the clientele that the you're servicing. Unique, the unique product for that client. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, if you look at our company, uh, our general contracting company, we've got two products that we sell mainly. Uh, and this is what we're talking about, diversifying the, your, your client base, right? Our first product was homeowners like we just talked about. Mm-hmm. 08 hit, everyone got foreclosed on. It felt like like oh. half of America got foreclosed on. Right. Uh, and by 2010, 11 and 12, all through those years, you can buy a house for 10 cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. So nobody was pulling money out. Right. I had zero homeowners running, running back then, uh, and nobody had cash to renovate. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I, so very, very small group of, of customers remaining at, during this time. Right. And so what I did was I said, okay, that, that one product is great. I don't have enough people to sell it to. Mm-hmm. And so we took that product and duplicated it mm-hmm. and said, okay, here's our current product. I, there are so many investors calling us for work. How do we service the investor world with, with a different product, right? Because I right. can't charge I was losing the bids when I was charging 33% profit mm-hmm. because they don't want to spend that much, right? I said for homeowners, they care about experience first, money second. Mm-hmm. Now I know with investors, they care about money first, and ease. M- money second, <laughs> no doubt, <laughs> money yeah. third, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, secondarily, they care, I want this to be easy. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to hunt you down. I want a delivery of a product as we agree upon. 
I mm-hmm. don't need a high end product a lot of the time. I need just exactly to buy these things from yeah. you. I, I need don't need back and bathroom. forth phone calls. I don't want to walk it with you every day. I don't need any of that. Uh, we come up with a decision. Yep. I'm okay with this low, low, low price that you gave me, and you deliver the product. And I'm also okay with not painting five color splotches on the wall for mm-hmm. me to pick. I'm okay with you not walking me through uh, Home Depot to pick up materials. So we painted all agreeable gray. <laughs> yeah, we, we built a product that was that we can sell for cheaper because it took less of our time, yeah. right? We, yeah. we uh, but we explained to the client, you're going to get it for a, a investor pricing. But what that means, what you're sacrificing is I'm going to use my crew that has three teeth in his mouth. Yep. Right. I'm going to use a crew mm-hmm. in an empty house that I wouldn't use with a homeowner that can pay less, but just as good as painting. But right. I couldn't send him into a homeowner house. That's right. Right. Uh, I'm going to use. Uh, I'm not going to spend the amount of time on material uh, collection and purchasing that I would with a homeowner because we are doing good, better, best pricing on mm-hmm. our materials. Mm-hmm. Do you want w- which good, better, best on the door handles? Great, I've got them selected. Do you want brush nickel or do you want right? And and so we had, we, we had to take our we had to take our homeowner process, mm-hmm. realize that we couldn't charge the same amount of money, yep. and to be able to deliver the product that this client needed, we had to figure out how do I create efficiency yes. and speed. Yep. And the way we had to do that is say, Mr. Customer, we're going to give you the pricing that you want, but you're not going to get these things that are going to slow us down. Correct. We are going to move fast. We're going to get this done for you so that you can make the most amount of money you can make on this client, but we're not going to do these things. Very clear up front yeah. saying that and saying, if you want those things, we'd love to offer them to you. That's a different product. Right. That's a, it's a more expensive product because you're buying more of my time. And yeah. everybody understands that, right? Yeah. I'm going to buy, you're going to buy more of my time. So it costs more because you're buying more. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So we would say, this is the product for an investor. This is what you get. This is what you don't get. You get one final walk. I'm mm-hmm. not going to come back 17 times for punch out. Right. And, and a bunch of other things to make us super efficient because when I'm doing a homeowner job, I can juggle seven at a time. Yeah. I need to make 33%. Mm-hmm. When I'm doing these investor jobs, I'm 12, 13, 14, 15 jobs open at a time because it's in, out, repeat the process. Right. Well, and, and I think uh, something to note here that I think is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're being very clear that it is, you know, where, where contractors really mess themselves up in yep. this is that they think, who, what, uh, me. I deliver me Mm -hmm. to my clients. And so it doesn't matter what kind of job, they'll be happy because it's me. And the reality, it's not. It is is two separate products, and you have to have them very specifically organized and know exactly how that process is going to go for a homeowner and the difference and variance of that for an investor. Because everything that we've said on our podcast boils down to front end proactive communication setting expectations setting expectations yep. and if i don't know what my process is for an investor then i don't have the ability to tell them what what to expect and it's going to get into a job and it's going to fall apart yep. and it and, and I, we're going to lose money we're going to lose time and it's going to be a venture that's not going to work yep. and especially in the investor world we realized that it was about quantity yep. and the more we could do, the better we could do in that industry, but we had to be efficient. Yep. We had to be able to move quickly in and out, knock it out. And that made the clients happy because they, they, uh, they cared about money, money, money and ease. Yep. And that's what we created that process to deliver. And we were very, very clear with them. This is the ex- what you can expect from us. And as soon as as long as we let them know that on the front end, same way it is with the homeowners, it made the jobs go efficiently yeah. the way they needed to go. But you need to know they are two separate products. Yeah. You cannot offer a, a kind of hybrid thing of uh, of what you need to understand exactly how both of them operate. Exactly. And when, with when you come to an investor, right? When, when it comes to that world uh, as an example, they if you can hit, the money price point that works for them, yep. they will pick you every time if you've got the customer service included in it. Because ease. Because everybody else at that price point is very hard to get a hold of. They're fly by night guys. Mm-hmm. They're they're so if you can get to that lower price point in exchange for I'm not giving you as much as long as yep. you're cool with it, right? We've set those expectations. We won every single one of those jobs because who are we competing against? Yeah. Right. And so. 
yes, I could have made more money doing a homeowner job today, mm -hmm. saying yes to that, than saying yes to this investor job. But this investor job I saw, I can build this product, we can take on more work, and I can set it up to run without me, just like the homeowner, but, I'm, yeah. but it is more of a product and less of a person. Right? And so, uh, again, this is an example of two different ways that we went. And the, the best thing we did in the last recession was saying, I am shifting and doing a lot more investors, but I'm keeping my homeowner product, mm -hmm. and I'm still going to service people in that product. It's, it's still on the shelf. Different crews. Yep. I might have one project manager towards homeowners and three or four towards investors, and we might shift back to five towards homeowners mm -hmm. and two versus inve towards investors. Right. right? We, we have the ability to move guys around, change our crews out, grow and be flexible when we're sitting back and assessing the market. And that's a, a, a recession or not, um, the, the market changes yes. based on elections, based on I mean, the, the prices of materials. You know, it, it changes a lot. And so to have that diversity, it allows you to, to ebb and flow your yeah. business, keep your revenue up where you need to, to sustain and continue growing your yeah. company. It's funny. We, we had, uh, for a long time, Jared was running our turn side, our, our investor arm of the company. Like a top, too, uh, I tell it, you. He, and, and so now he doesn't work there anymore. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and then the other arm of the company was, was who's currently our general manager running the whole thing now. Mm -hmm. And so I had both of these guys running two different sides. And I remember the conversations with you guys where we just kept being like, as soon as, okay, so the, um, I've got a ton of homeowners coming up. Now we're both going to be on, working on all cylinders. Month we're over, month it. over, month that would happen. And it was yeah. always one was up or the other was up. Mm -hmm. And we at, at first we were like, are we cursed? We right. can't get them both working. Uh -huh. And then we stopped and realized we're blessed yeah. because we have the catch, the fail safe mm -hmm. that catches us when one side starts That's stopping. Right. So it went from like, okay, we got to get them both up and be killing it on both sides, yeah. which happens at in the middle part yeah. of, of, yeah, yeah. of the six to eight year curves that mm -hmm. go up and down and up and down. But then we realized this is it. This is the model because when one side's going lower and lower, the other side goes higher and higher. Yeah. Well, and I mean, honestly, I, you know, in, in eight, nine years of doing that specific thing with the two different arms, uh, we we were always worried because it was always the seesaw back and forth, and uh -huh. there were there were some rare occasions where both of them were just killing it at the same time. Yep. Um, but we were always worried, crap, what happens when they both go down? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think in in you know eight nine years or so, I think that might have happened once, yeah, maybe twice, and most of that was. Uh, other variables, yeah. uh, you know, hiring. We made bad hires. Putting a lot of our eggs stuff. in one company's basket uh, that's that right. was sending us 30 houses a month, and then yeah. all of a sudden they went out of business. But for the most like part, that. it really did. I mean, over and over and over, it was a, it was a back and forth yep. where there was a season where one was just killing it and the other one was doing okay. Yeah. And then it would shift, right? Yep. But it, it, it really it helped us out so much year after year so, to, to keep that continued revenue. Uh, what we would suggest today, if you were going to take steps towards this today, is first off, identify your current product. Are you an electrician? Self-assessment again. Self-assessment <laughs> round two. Yeah. You, last week, we, we assessed ourselves and said, hey, this is what, my, what needs to be fixed in my product. Yeah. I'm not going to be lulled to sleep that, this, that the, the pandemic boom that's happened it doesn't mean that I'm going to continue like this always, right? right? And so that was last week. This week, we're going to self-assess and say, what is my ideal client that I service? I'm an mm -hmm. electrician in the commercial world. So this is who my ideal client is. Yeah. I do fire and water restoration. So my insurance agents and homeowners that have, uh, that's my ideal, right? And so I'm looking at who I service, mm -hmm. and I'm defining my product around servicing those people to give them the best experience or whatever they are most looking for. Like I said, the, the, the investor experience is secondary mm -hmm. to, to money. And so how can I get this investor the least amount of money for, uh, and, and with the most amount of return on, on the renovation right. or whatever you're doing and secondarily get that experience? Mm -hmm. And so I'm identifying my 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 target market yep. and I'm looking at the, that experience that they're having and I'm going to build the process around that one. And I'm is starting it, with one. Is it duplicatable, duplicatable, replicatable, and dependable? Can I teach someone to yeah. do this? Yeah. Can I step out and have someone running this and teach them to do this? Yeah. Because to create, to, to pivot and go yeah. into something new that you haven't done before, whatever it is. Like, say yeah. you're investors and you've only been investors and now you're going homeowners or, or whatever. Great example. 
Jared was my first hire. Yeah. Right. I had the invest. I had shifted over to investors, and I was doing a ton of investor work. Brought Jared in because I was underwater with the amount of work that we had with investors, and taught him what we were doing. Brought him up to speed on our processes, procedures, how we de- executed jobs. Brought brought you into that. Yeah. And you and I said, okay, you're good. You've got this down. Execute. Execute this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start handling homeowners. Well, I'll still over here manage and help you, yeah. but I'm going to focus over here and you focus on this product. And so we had a secondary product that I had always had in my back pocket right. that I went back to as the market fluctuation, yeah. the seesaw started happening again. I went over towards the homeowners and started growing that. Well, and if you had, if you had pulled the trigger too early mm-hmm. or didn't have uh, the, the right processes in place and the right people in place, and you you uh, diverted your attention too early, yep. that could have failed. Yep, it would have failed yeah. because you, it the way that most guys that we see build these uh, build their processes is I am the process. Mm-hmm. So if that mm-hmm. was the case, I wouldn't have had a process written down to teach you when you came in. Right, you would just by all right, Clark. What are we doing next? And you would have been my assistant. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have learned our processes, and you would have been an assistant trying to help. Like, what if we did it this way? What about this? And yeah. And so I wouldn't have been able to set you up to move on to the next uh, division uh, because you would have still needed me full time in there. Right. So And so that's why the, the very first step is self-assessment. Self-assessing. Do, is, is what you do, do you have it down to a science yep. where you could take somebody else and they can run it and you can afford to divert your time and attention to the other the, yep. the, the other diversifying yep. of your And you're your might, business. you might not even be setting someone else up. You might not be hiring someone for that. Sure. You might just be running both those products yourself, mm-hmm. but you still have to know this is if someone came in, this is how it runs for this product. That's because right. if I've got that written down and I know that, I can convey that to my client of exactly what to expect. Mm-hmm. I set expectations by telling them what the process is. Yep. And so I, here's my process for homeowners. This is what I'm going to be doing. And now I think I'm going to try to take on some investors to get get ready for if a recession happens or mm-hmm. even if we just kind of balance out, homeowners are going to start slowing down. Right. I am going to take my process. I'm going to rewrite it for investors. I'm mm-hmm. going to rewrite it for fire water restoration. I'm going to rewrite it for commercial. I'm going to rewrite it for multi, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to assess before I even say yes to the first client. Right. I'm going to say, where are my clients coming from? What do they care about? How, how is my product going to service what they're looking for? That's right. And I'm going to start writing those processes. Mm-hmm. From there, I say yes to my first investor. Mm-hmm. And I start with saying, all right, so I've got two different products. I've got my homeowner side and I've got my investor side. I'm guessing you want the investor pricing. So right. that's, let me tell you what you're sacrificing mm-hmm. in, in, in getting a lower, cheaper price. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Are you okay with that that sacrifice? Yes, I am. That's great. I love that. I would much rather do cheaper and not have you holding my hand. Yeah. Perfect. Right. And so I'm, I'm taking my two processes and identifying them as two separate products mm-hmm. to be able to expand my the market size yeah. the footprint that i can take well and I, I i think as you're as you're doing that uh you know whatever your current product is look at the other uh opportunities that are out there yeah whether it's investors that are doing flips investors that are doing holding properties and their rentals yep. whether you're getting into insurance work fire water remediation look at those and and determine which ones do you think best will diversify your company in a recession if we yeah. went through a recession who's going to go up and who's going to go down and, and and figure out what that is yeah. and then make the decision okay i think fire water restoration because also we've got experience with that we've done that i'm going to take our current model and the experience that we have and it's an easy move into yeah. that so it's just choosing you know what do i think will best diversify my yeah. company and, and and then you separate the products refine them to make sure that they are clear, clearly defined separate products. Yep. And I, I think, I think the third, the third step that we, that we mentioned is start now. Yeah. Do it now. Yep. Um, you never know when the recession changes are going to happen. Yeah. Um, but if we don't go into recession, you're going to be better off anyways, because you are continuing to diversify your product. Yeah. You've got multiple levels of revenue income, and it, it's, it, it is a place where you can continue to spearhead the growth and, and develop. Well, it's worst company. case scenario. You, 
you started a secondary uh, product that you're offering yeah. and a huge recession hits and one or the other product saves your butt. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. You, 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 you're like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I started this because without this, I'd be out of business. Yeah. Best case scenario, you start a secondary and now you've grown to double your size. Yeah. I now have two arms of my company. Mm-hmm. So it's a win-win no matter what. That's right. But starting now means I'm going to look at my first current product and get super focused on making that perfect mm-hmm. and building that out while try, trying to identify what part of this product am I going to change as my secondary product. Right. Uh, and so looking at that first, it, if you want our help, we do this all the time. We have got those products built out that we hand hold you walking through. If you need help Sh- refining your sh- process. Come to Chicago yeah. September 1st. It's a one day and we do this there. Mm-hmm. We sit down and show you. Here's the 10 steps. Let's take them and refine them into your company. Mm -hmm. And then here's how you plan for the next 12 months. So we'd love to help you do that. Absolutely. That's where you're going to start. Look at your product, identify it, define it, write it down, take that, make a duplicate, and then start refining it again and say, okay, I'm going to take this away. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to go after these clients this way. And, And walking through building that second product once the first product is finished. Yep. Great. That is it. Go to our website, proservealliance.com. If you want to hear more, we've got videos on there. Uh, YouTube is a great spot to catch all of these. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want to look through some of our videos, uh, we've got a hiring videos there. We have a bunch of different uh, videos on that. And on our website as well, we've got uh, educational tab on the top that you can go or, and or email us stuff. directly if you've got questions problems issues complaints about what we say send it we'd love to we'd love, we'd love to, hear. to hear it all right thank you guys so much next week tune in we're going to be covering the grind list the grind list you'll right. like it thanks Matt.